In this example, we're going to see how we can trap user events such as a button click. The users interact with graphical user interfaces by clicking on buttons or sliding sliders or scrolling through lists or resizing windows. And all of these things are events within our graphical user interface system. So how do we trap an event like a button click? which is a pretty typical kind of thing that users do with graphical user interfaces. Well, we're going to see what code we need to add to our example to do that. So the first thing that we need to do is have a look at our class definition. So, so far we have class and this class is called week 10 example tree and it extends the JFrame class that's part of the swing libraries. Okay, so we're going to add some code into this and we're going to add in the keyword implements. And we're also going to say implements something called an action listener. Okay, so what have we done here? Well, basically what we've told this class or we've told Java that this class is going to extend the JFrame and it's also going to implement something called an action listener. So what this does is it tells the system that any events that happen such as button clicks or uh, windows resizing or scroll bars being scrolled or whatever happens or text being typed into text boxes all of those events are going to be handled by this class. So we're saying that we're going to implement an action listener that's going to trap all of those events. Okay, so if we compile our program as it is now, what will happen? Well, let's see. So we have some errors. So let's look at what the error is saying. It's saying, okay, week 10 example tree is not an abstract class and does not override the abstract method action performed action event. Oh, what does this mean? Well, basically what it means is it's saying, okay, you said that you were going to implement an action listener, but you have not added any code to your class that will handle events. So when you say implements action listener, you must provide an action listener method or an action performed method as part of your class. So to get rid of this error, what we're going to do is add a special method to our class that can capture and handle events. So down here, just before the main method, I'm going to add in another method and it's going to be called public void. And the name of the method is action performed. And it takes an action event as its argument. So look, we implement an action listener. So we're saying, look, we're going to handle events. We're going to take events from the user like button clicks and so on, and we're going to handle them. But in order to do that, I have to provide a special method in the class called action performed. And it has to take an action event as its parameter. Now, we have to be very careful with the naming of this. If you get the naming of this wrong, if it's not exactly as it is there, public void action performed action event, and you can actually call E, it can be any variable name or argument name, but let's just call it E for event. So if it doesn't look exactly like this, you'll run into difficulty. So let's save it and let's compile again and see that we get rid of our error message. Okay, good, the error message has disappeared, but it's gotten rid of the error message by adding this method in, but it's not doing anything, it's just a blank method. So what can we do in here? Well, when the user presses a button, we want to be able to trap an event. So if I click on the button, I want to be able to capture that event and then do something. Now, our user interface at the moment just has a simple single button on there. So what I would like to do just to illustrate how this action performed method works is I'm going to add a second button to the user interface. 
So I'm going to go up to where I've declared the J button, my original J button called my button, and I'm going to call this my button one instead. And I'm going to copy this piece of code and put it underneath, and then I'm going to call this variable my button two. So now I've got two J buttons. And down where I create the button, so add my button to the layout, and instead of doing that, I'm going to say my button one equals new J button, and let's get rid of this text and let's call it button one. And I'm going to copy that code because remember I want to add two buttons in, so I'm going to say my button two equals new J button, and I'm going to call this one button two. So the text of the buttons is different, it's button one, button two. Now down here, where I added my original button to the flow layout, I'm going to add both buttons in. So let's put a little comment here. Add both buttons to the flow layout. Okay, so c.add my button one, and then I'm going to copy that code and I'm going to say c.add my button two. All right, so now we should have a user interface with two buttons. So let's compile and see, is that the case? All right, there we go. We have a window with button one and button two. So what I'd like to be able to do is click on button one and for something to happen, and click on button two and for something different to happen. So I want to differentiate between the events for clicking button 1 and the events for clicking button 2. So let's go to our action performed method. This is where all of the activity is going to take place. So in the action performed method, what I can do is when the user clicks on button 1 or button 2, the information about that will be held in this action event. So I can query the action event to see which button has been pressed. And I do that through an if statement. So I can say if, let's put a little comment in here, uh, check to see which button has been clicked. Okay, so I can say if e dot get action command. So I can say, here, here's my event E that has happened, and I can check to see what event has happened by saying E dot get action command. So what was the command? What happened to cause that event? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this event, this action event, against the text of the button. So you can see here I've set the text for button 1 as button 1, um, and I've set the text for button 2 as button 2. So I can check that. I can say, okay, e dot get action command dot equals, and this is an uh, operation similar to string equality. So I can say dot equals, and I can put in the text for button one. So the text for button one is as it is there, button one. And then I can say else if, and I'm just going to copy this conditional block down because it's pretty similar. Else if e dot get action command dot equals and I'm going to check against button 2 now. Okay, so now I have this conditional block and what that's going to do is it's going to check to see which event has happened. Was it a click on button 1 or was it a click on button 2? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some system output into each of these branches so we can see which button has been clicked. So I'm just going to say system.out.println and I'm going to say button 1 has been clicked. Okay, let's copy that down to the other branch down there. Okay, system.out.print now. Uh, button 2 has been clicked. Okay, so now we have got our implements action listener. We've added in our action performed. We're querying or checking the action command 
inside to see which button has been clicked and checking to see you know is it button one is it button two uh, we've added of course our two buttons in I've now got two J buttons I've um, created the two J buttons with different text with different button text and I've added in the buttons into the flow layout so let's compile this and see does it work okay so we're gonna compile hopefully we don't have any errors we do I've missed a semicolon in here somewhere um, let's see oh yes the system out doesn't have a semicolon so let's fix that and save it and compile okay so that looks good and um, let's run it now and test to see are our button click events being trapped and um, is our action performed method actually working okay here's our window and I'm gonna click on button one hmm okay nothing's happening so I'll click on it a couple more times just to make sure and as you can see I'm not getting any output I should see the system output button one has been clicked down here in my console window or in my output let's click button two. Oh, okay nothing is happening here either for button two no output so what's gone wrong well let's close our window down and I'll explain what's happening so we're, we're telling our class to implement it's going to implement an action listener we have our action performed method here to trap the events and check to see which one has happened but we're missing a vital component and the component that we're missing is when we create these buttons button one and button two we have to tell each button where to send its events at the moment the, the events are being created and they're being sent to the system but the system doesn't know what to do with those events we have to write special code in our program to handle or trap those events so we have to tell button one and button two look when you get clicked or when an event happens that involves you send your events to this class because we're gonna handle it here and the way we do that is for each button we have to add an action listener okay add an action listener for each button so we're gonna say my button one dot add action listener and we're going to tell button one to send its events to this object this class okay so this keyword this what does it mean well we'll go into a little bit more detail about this keyword when we deal with objects later on but the this keyword refers to this object it's like a self-reference so it's telling the button one object send your events to yourself in other words send them to this class the class that you're in and we do this because we want to handle those events in this method the method that we added to the class the action performed method so it's basically saying look send your events to this class and we'll handle them here okay so we've done that for button one and I also need to do that for button two so my button two dot add action listener this so both of the buttons are going to send their events to itself essentially into this class and uh, the events are gonna come through this action performed method we're going to check to see which one has been clicked and then do something different based on that conditional block so let's run our program let's compile and run the program okay so here's our window and hopefully now when we click button one haha you'll see something's happening the event is being trapped and the appropriate message is being output to screen button one has been clicked okay let's keep our fingers crossed and hope the same thing happens when we click button two 
yes it is it's working we click button 2 and the event is being trapped it's being pumped through this action performed method through the action event and we can check to see which button has been pressed with the if statement and then do the appropriate thing in this case just a simple system out so we now have an interactive program of course we're just outputting simple messages to screen but later on those activities or those functions that are happening when each button gets pressed will become far more complicated and meaningful.